what inspired this 360 days? Could you tell us a little bit about well, it? I just, I wanted to paint every day. I do paint every day, but this time I wanted to sort of complete a painting every day. So it was like a, a kind of New Year's resolution, I suppose. But then I bought this kind of um, thing, a poem for every day. And mostly they're kind of not very good, but these were quite inspiring. So I just thought I'd do that. And then I got into writing about them because I'm always asking myself that question, what's your work about? And I just thought, well, I'd try and work it out for myself. So you started in uh, on... January 1st, you just woke up and said, OK, this is it. This is my New Year's yeah. resolution. Yeah, I did. And I just thought I'd paint the first thing that caught my eye. So it was a little green robot, a toy robot in the window. So I painted him. And uh, I wanted to kind of make it so that painting was an, like an endemic part of my life. So I'd, you know, I'd bring a canvas with me wherever I went. So that was it. I wouldn't think about what I was going to paint or anything like that. It's just, and it has been like that with me in painting. It's kind of like a diary thing that goes on and on and on. There are oils if I'm in one spot for a good while, but if I'm traveling, I bring acrylics. But I don't, I, I'd actually prefer oils to acrylics because I think acrylics are a bit plasticky or something. I think I'm kind of like a, a small moment kind of person rather than a big statement person. So it suited me better. You know, I do big paintings as well, but I prefer the smaller ones, you know. Mm. And you and it's 360 days, not 365 days. So what happened, Margot, uh, to the other five days? Uh, they, were, they might have been lost weekends or... Lo well, <laughs> they were... What were they? Uh, well, a couple of them were hangovers, I have to say. And then one I just... The first one I missed, I actually just forgot about it. I went to visit my sister and I was going to do my painting when I got home. And um, and then I realised next day I hadn't done it. And I was really quite fed up that I missed <laughs> the day. <laughs> like because it was only February or something. So I thought, oh, this is just, you know, useless. It's mm. only February and already I've missed a day. So mm. somehow I managed to miss five days. But it, it's nice because it's like, you know, 360 degrees somehow. Yeah, yeah it is. And, that, and that's, that kind of fits in a way, because I suppose I, 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 with the work, I, I do keep going around in circles, you know. I'm coming back to the same thing over and over. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, but everybody does. I think that's life, isn't it? Yeah, I think you get kind of fixated on one thing or another and you just spend your whole life doing that. You know, but mine is kind of the ordinary everyday thing. Would you say there's a bit of a philosophy attached to this uh, exhibition? Well, I, I I often said that painting is a bit like a meditation, and it kind of it kind of is that. But it's like stepping out stepping outside for a moment and just kind of just acknowledging whatever happens to be there. You know, it's no big deal. Somebody said to me are you celebrating the ordinary? And I said, no, I'm not really. I'm just, that's it. I'm just acknowledging it really, mm. you know, and that move on or whatever. So would you see your painting then as a kind of a, a like a practice? Um, yeah, well, that was, that was a, a great discipline in a way for me to actually, fin even though they were small, to finish one every day because, I don't know, I, I, I just... Um, I find it very hard to finish anything, really, you know, mm -hmm. and I'm a real procrastinator to actually get started. I could be sitting at the breakfast table meaning to go into the studio for a very long time before I actually get there. So a lot of them were done at the breakfast table or, you know, mm -hmm. clear away the dishes and just sit there and paint something. Mm -hmm. So I like that idea of, you know, not having it as this kind of special separate thing that it can just happen anywhere. The kind of the London ones have a lot of city views and they have a lot of, um, you know, I would be going to loads of exhibitions and things and maybe they, that came into it a bit and whatever I was reading came into it. Everything came into it. Newspaper headlines, you know. Mm. It's just that thing of time passing so quickly and that makes it even more... How would I say it? It's just kind of strikes even more when you look at it. God, that's, you know, I did those in 2009. And I can remember, it just seems like yesterday. And I can look at the painting and of a particular day and it 
brings back the day to me, even though I didn't specifically paint about that day, mm. which is mm. kind of interesting in a way. Mm. You know? Yeah, no, it's lovely to capture the moment and mm. kind of immortalize it, I suppose. Yeah. yeah, and sometimes those ordinary kind of inconsequential things can bring it back to you more in a way, in a funny way, than mm. the bigger events. I, it's nice now that we're, uh, you know, this exhibition is going to happen and it's just coming up to New Year's Eve and it's a time when people, they look back on the year mm. behind them and they're kind of planning yeah I mean it's funny in a way I'm kind of thinking oh god that's you know I did those in 2009 and I've showed them a couple of times in various formations and I've done a good bit of other stuff since that so maybe I should be showing that but somehow I haven't found a context for the other stuff the Mm. bigger paintings with the 3d things I call them my inside out paintings I haven't kind of found a place for them yet I did it more or less as I went along. I'd do the painting and then I'd write a few thoughts or something about it, you know. And sometimes it was just one line or sometimes it was a bit more than that, you know. And then um, I didn't, the first time I showed all the paintings, I hadn't got around to putting the book together. Mm. But then Mm. I did that afterwards and Mm. I still have a few of those. So what's in the book exactly? I mean, it's all the paintings... All of the paintings with the little bit of um, writing under each. Uh, do you take any inspiration from any other artists in this or is this like something that you just kind of came up with? I suppose it's more writers really cause, because I was reading um, a bit of poetry, you know, people like Elizabeth Bishop and Robert Bly and people like that, you know. I need to start reading a bit of poetry again. <laughs> <laughs> but I find I find poetry really inspiring and I find that it's very close to painting as well, somehow. Mm-hmm, you mm-hmm. know, just that condensed kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, you've invited a poet uh, to recite some work at the opening. Yeah, I gave uh, a copy of my little book to a friend of ours, uh, Ted McCarthy, is actually a brilliant poet from Monaghan, I really like his work, but um, I was really flattered that he was inspired to write a couple of poems about the paintings then, you know, oh, so really? he has written a couple of poems that he'll read oh, on the great. night. Yeah. Oh, great, great, mm. great. And there's music as well. So it's like there's poetry and there's also music attached with each uh, painting. Yeah. Yeah, I like the, I just like the idea of music because sometimes I did have songs in my head when I was painting. Sometimes I didn't. I listened to the radio a lot. I love I loved Desert Island Discs, so I listened to that a lot. And um, that came into it. And I kind of associate that with London as well. Desert mm-hmm. Island Discs, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that's why I just thought the music would be kind of a nice idea, a painting, so it's nice if you have a bit of music mm-hmm. too, I think. Mm-hmm. 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 Lovely, so it'll be like a multimedia experience. Mm, hopefully, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a bit of fun, you know. I don't know. I even find that myself, and art is my real passion, and painting is my passion, and even I find that if I go to an exhibition, I look at all the paintings and then... You know, it's nice to chat to people, but it's also a bit uncomfortable because you're all standing around with your glass of wine or whatever. Looked mm. at all the paintings, I've kind of chatted to a couple of people, and now what? Mm-hmm. You know? So with most kind of artistic things, it's fine if you're like feeling inspired and, you know, you mm. do. But like, you, you, can't, you know, it's hard to be inspired every single day, right? Yeah. yeah. No, you can't be. I think sometimes you just have to sit there and... Mm. Uh, hope something comes or I don't know just Mm. sit there you know sit there in your empty room Mm. Mm. or actually my room was never empty so it was very cluttered so it's kind of also I suppose like a a, a reflection on the creative process kind of is I mean I'm I'm fascinated by other people's creative process and I'm always kind of reading stuff about other artists and how they kind of feel about their work and what inspires them and you know it's just Mm. that inspires me as well reading about how other people Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. feel about their work and how they go about it and how they and what inspires them and I I go to shows all the time 
as mm-hmm. well. You mm-hmm. know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which is fascinating because the exhibition kind of like lets people into your process as well, very much. You know, it's almost mm, like. I hope so. Yeah. Mm. Mm. I hope so, because in a way, in a way, you kind of, well, I don't have a clue what I'm doing, really. I feel like most of the time I feel like I don't have a clue what I'm doing. And it's almost like that the picture doesn't or the painting doesn't really come to life until someone else sees it mm. and mm. reacts to it or doesn't react to it or whatever. Mm-hmm. 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 And like also it's about like just doing it as mm. opposed to overthinking it, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Just doing it is definitely... It's definitely it. You know, if I was thinking about it, I'd never, I'd never do it, mm-hmm. really. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, too daunting. 